Hello everyone. So in this video, I will do an example on shift register. As you all know, the shift register is a kind of a register that will move the bits to the left or the right, depends on um, what register it is. So here we have this shift register, as you can see, and it consists of three flip-flops. And then what we have is the initial state. So we have the initial state. So we know that Q3, Q2, Q1 being 0, 1, 0 is our initial state. Okay. And we want to define uh, and find out what is the next state and what is the sequence that this shift register is um, working on. All right. So first we have 0, 1, 0. If you look at the register, let me write it with another color. So we have 0 for Q3, 1 for Q2, and 0 for Q1, right? So let's see what are the D inputs, okay, before the active edge of the clock. So we know that when this register is working, when it operates is when the active, clock, uh, active edge of the clock happens, right? because it consists of flip-flops and the state of the flip-flop only um, changes with the active edges of the clock. All right. So before anything happens, before any um, active edge of the clock happened, what we had here was that Q prime was zero. So when Q prime is zero, D3 is zero. Oh, Q prime is one, sorry, and D3 is one as well, right? Because Q prime here is connected to D3 in this flip-flop, right? And then we had Q3 go to zero, so my D2 was equal to zero because they're connected with a wire. And then Q2 was one, so D1 was equal to one, all right? So when the active edge of the clock happens and when the register operates, it means that the states of the flip-flops changes. So, and we all know that in the D flip-flop, the next state is equal to the data input. All right. So the active edge of the clock happens. So one by one, we'll see what happens to the states of the flip flops. So in flip flop, so let me just um, number these flip flops. So in flip flop number three, the data input D3 will be my next state for Q3 plus, right? So my next state has Q3 as one. Then the data input two, so in the second flip-flop, in the flip-flop number two, D2, whatever we have in D2 will go into Q2, right? Because we know that the next state of the flip-flop in the D flip-flop is equal to the data input, all right? And then what is happening to Q1? So we see that D1 is equal to one. So my Q1 will be equal to all right, now, so this is the next state of my flip-flop, all right? So this is how it starts working. Let's see what is the next state here. So I'm going to delete these and then do what we did previously for this state here, all right? So again, we have to define the... We have to define the states of the flip-flops. So this one is Q2, all right, at the present state. So at the present state, you see that Q3 is equal to one. So Q3 is equal to one, right? So when Q3 is equal to one, we know that D2 is equal to one, right? And Q2 is equal to zero, so we have a zero over here. So this zero, D0, D1 will be also zero. And we know that Q1 is equal to one. So Q prime one is equal to zero, right? So this zero will go all the way to D3, all right? So now I have all the present states. And now what I have to find out is the values for the next states of my flip-flops, all right? Okay, so now the active edge of the clock happens and all the data inputs will go into the states of the flip-flops. So what would be Q3? Q3 will be equal to zero, Q2 equal to one, 
and q1 equal to 0. So you can see that we went back to our initial state. So this sequence will be um, repeating all the time. So actually, if we want to show how this register is working, we can say that all the time it goes to 1, 0, 1, and then comes back to the initial state. All right, so as you can see, the bits are shifted, right? All right, so this was just um, a simple example on shift register. I hope you um, understood how it works. If you have any questions, leave it in the comment down below. And see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.